All right. Well, Election Day is just four days away, and the anticipation for this moment is hanging in the air. In a short time, the power will shift away from those hands of the people in the government and back into the hands of the power of the people, where they will decide once and for all which direction they want this country to head. Already, people are casting early uh, voting ballots. President Obama, of course, made election history by being the first president to ever vote early. But rampant allegations of voter fraud and voter suppression have cast a shadow of doubt over the fairness of this election. As a result, the UN-affiliated group of international auditors called the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe has sent election monitors to the U.S. to oversee this process. And this has two uh, officials in California, uh, in states across the U.S., upset, very upset. So much so that Texas Attorney um, General Greg Abbott and Iowa Secretary of State Matt Schultz are actually threatening to subject the monitors to criminal, criminal prosecutions if they are found within 100 feet of a polling station. But why are these state officials so afraid of international oversight to ensure a fair and democratic election process? Joining me now with the answer is John Greenbaum. He's the chief counsel of the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights under law. Hey there, John. Let's start, uh, start off by asking why um, are Iowa Secretary of State and the, the Texas Attorney General so opposed to voting monitors? Megan, thanks for having me on. The answer is I really don't know. It's, it's really quite silly. The monitors from Europe have been monitoring uh, our elections uh, for the last several years and in fact I'll be meeting with them tomorrow and there has never been a problem like this before. Would you consider this a double standard considering the fact that the U.S. is advocating this group, the OSCE, and they're also advocating them, the, this group going into other countries, uh, the 56 other states that are in countries that are participating in this and saying hey you can go ahead and monitor their elections here but when it comes to us we are fine. We don't need any help. Well, and you've you've talked about the two sort of outcasts there, the Texas Attorney General and the Iowa Secretary of State, and it's really unfortunate. It really gives us a black eye as a country. I and mean, we should be transparent about our elections and have and let people in Europe and the rest of the world know that we run elections in a way that's going to be fair to people. And John, what, one thing that I do have to say is that what we are seeing in this election cycle, more than any other, I would say, is allegations of voter suppression, of caging, of purging, of voter fraud. So given all of these allegations, I mean, the, uh, the Iowa Secretary of State, Matt Schultz alone, he actually found a list, or he says he found a list, of 3,582 non-citizens that he thinks would be voting in their election. So given all of these accusations, um, does it make sense to have these international monitors? Well, you know, it's a good idea. It's a it's a good idea. It's a good good idea to be able to show the world that we run a fair election system. And you know, we do expect most people to be able to vote on election day without a problem. And for those who don't, um, my organization is part of a coalition, the Election Protection Coalition, and we run a hotline one eight six six R vote, and we. Like and people, it's available for anybody to call if they have any any problems, and we will try to help people work through the problems they have on election day. And John, certainly, what we're seeing is a lot of people having problems um, getting the IDs with the, all of this, this slew of new voter ID laws um, coming into play here. But I do want to ask you, what um, do these um, voting monitors? What real jurisdiction do they have, if any, in calling out voter fraud in sovereign elections? It's really not their job to interfere and, and to, be, to be clear. What they're there to do is they're there to observe. And, they, and what will happen is they'll go in, they'll watch the elections in various states across the country, and they'll come back with a report based on, based on what they've seen. They're not going to be, The idea is when you're an observer, you're not in there to interfere if you, if you see something that isn't going right. And that really uh, demonstrates how silly the officials in Iowa and Texas have been is that that these observers are not going to be there to try to interfere with the election in any way. Now, one argument that we have heard for these people not being allowed in this election cycle or, or not being allowed is that, first of all, their opinions don't matter. Second of all, that the polling places are, are too crowded and they can only handle a certain amount of people. 
Um, talk about the what they would be doing, what they would be observing, because from my understanding, what these observers do is simply sit back. They're kind of like a fly in the wall, and they kind of watch and see what happens. They don't interfere in the process in any way. And I do also find it interesting, just as a little uh, side note, that uh, you know media cameras are allowed in these polling stations. They're like pulling the the ballots out of the people's hands right as they're printing um, to kind of find out how the precincts are doing. But in the same time, they're not interfering, but these uh, these monitors are. Megan, you're absolutely right. The whole idea of the observers is that they are flies on the wall. They're, they're there taking notes. They're not trying to call attention to themselves. They're not trying to create any issues at the polling place. And there may be a few polling places here and there that can't stand, that are so tight that they can't hold another person or two. But I'm, sh I'm sure that's not a problem and far away the bulk of polling places across the country. Because really, if things are that tight, that's going to be a problem for voters, too. If there are long lines or a lot of people trying to vote at the polling place and there are problems, you probably shouldn't have your polling place in a room where you can't fit, fit an extra person or two. And one of the really interesting points also to bring up is that a lot of these people that are raising the biggest fuss about this are Republicans. We've got Greg Abbott, um, John Gale, Republican Congressman uh, Connie Mac, Mac, and also we've got the Iowa Secretary of State, Matt Schultz. Uh, so it's very interesting. We're going to have to watch to see if this plays out. Um, there's 44 uh, observers that are coming. But um, for now, we're just going to have to, to see how, how this plays out. Don Greenbaum, Chief Counsel of the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Megan.